lab zero file attacking web applications and we are going to practice SQL injection, sensitive data exposition, cross-site scripting, cross-site request forgery and silver site request forgery. The prerequisite the web attack practice environment I demonstrate the installation during the lecture. So if you didn't install it, follow this video to install the web attack environment. You may use a Windows Server or Windows Host or Ubuntu. Just one of them. You don't need to need all of them. So for those students who didn't install this environment, please follow this demo video to install the web attack environment. The tasks we are going to do is a list here. There are two tasks. The first task start your web code and web wolf. Then practice uh, web attack lessons in web code. So first we need to uh, run the web code and web wolf in command prompt. We need to open two of them. Here to make the career change the title one as web goat see it web goat the other one as web wolf here web wolf now we need to go to the folder where we save the web goat and web wolf here is my Folder I saved this web code and web wolf. See the web uh, code. Web Wolf. Now run these two programs. I suggest you use the default option, which means the default port number and the default server address. So you only need to copy this port. This is the web code. Okay, now it's running. Web Wolf. Okay, now both program are running, but we will not access directly from this place. We will set up. We will start them from this uh, zap. Choose the default option. Start it.
pay attention to this one. Enable the depth hard, and we will disable it. So, which means uh, looks like this. In the lecture, we saw there are icons added by this depth into the web wolf website and the web goat website. So you may disable this uh, that part, then you will not see those uh, icons added by this step. Now copy this web code. For those students didn't attend the lecture, so you need to register a new user. I already uh, registered a new user. Okay, now you see the lessons. Once you complete a lesson, you will see these ticks. And you didn't see those uh, icons added here, right? Because they are turned off with this one. When you come back, refresh. You see these icons. You may click here. You will have the same effect as you disabled them here. So we will hide them, disable the that part. Now we, we get something wrong. Uh, An exception occurred when I attempt to connect to this website. Okay, let's close this one and start again. Here, start from here. Now you pay attention to the traffic accepted, uh, intercepted. You see, this is what we want, but there are some other stuff. We don't want them. We need to fill out these things. You can uh, click the history to set up the filter. And how do we set up the filter? It's in the general lessons here, the proxy. You can find them in the proxy. Here, page file, field requests in history panel. We need to set up these two. Click this field. Your ink regex. And this is your error uh, exclu excluding regex. Click apply. Now you see only the here, only the web code show up here.
for the web wolf, you may run in other browsers. So let's run it here as well. But it will intercept the, the information. We may run it from here to run the web wolf. Okay, this is a web for Wolf. In this lab, we are going to practice these lessons here. Injection, sensitive data exposure, cross-set scripting, cross-set request uh, forgery. Here we have both. Cross-site request forgery, server-side request forgery. So we will start from this uh, injection. Here you see SQL injection, introduction, advanced, and the mitigation. Okay, in this uh, in introduction, you can see the there uh, were uh, knowledge and concepts, so you can go through this stuff by yourself. And when we are focused on those questions, we need to solve. So for each uh, in your lab report, Please make sure you need to take a screenshot for each page, so which uh, indicate you read through these things. So please uh, read through these things by yourself. Here uh, a table show you employees, employee table, user ID, first name, last name, department, salary, this uh, boss indication stuff. Now it's your turn. So for these uh, red icons, it means there is a question we need to solve. Here, these are the questions we need to solve. Look at the example table here. Try to retrieve the department of the employee, Bob Franco. Note that you have been granted full admins greater privileges in this uh, assignment and can access all data without authentication. So you are asked only to retrieve the department of Bob Franco. Right here, Bob Franco. For those students who didn't learn database, so you may not be familiar how to write these things. You can use uh, show hints, always use show hints or Google the questions. Here, if you want the data from the column with the name department, you know the database name is employees, and you know the first and last name of the employee. Then you can click this next, use this syntax, select column from table name where the condition use instead of when comparing two strings here pay attention to case sensitivity when comparing two strings these are the hint so we, we are asked to find the department Right, so we select department. Follow this one. Select column. We want to find the department. So you need to type department from which table? The table name is called employees, right? Employees, 
select the column from the table set up a condition where here the employee Bob Franco here when you check here first name Bob there is only a there is no duplicate first name and also there is no duplicate uh, last name so you may use uh, either will be fine so where there's a first name right? first name like that the column first name equals pop and you submit submit when run you get no result check the sql statements and the table above Where first name, where condition, right? It says sometimes we need a case sensitive, but in the real world, SQL statements, most of them are, they are not, they are case insensitive. But in this uh, assignment, let's try to follow these things. For example, Select uh, from where select from. So the table is a uh, table name is in Bree. Employee, so I made a mistake. Employee, not employees. Here, employees table. The name of the table is employees, but here it shows a uh, and the table name of the employee. The database name is employees. Okay, usually a database is contains uh, several tables. Where first name equals Bob, last name is Franco. We are expected to get this uh, marketing when we write this uh, select department. Right, there's a department to check whether I have any typos. Select department from employees where there's a first name here, first name equals Bob. So I still get the mistake. You can also change this one. We already know Bob. Here Bob's user ID is this one. You can also use user ID. Well you we can try first to just select all the department from the employees table. Let's uh, get something wrong. Add the same color. Okay, this is weird. I want to select everything. Let's select everything from this table. But may the answer it will check only list retrieve the department. So if we select everything from the employees so the feedback we didn't get the uh, exact feed feedback it just say uh, you got no results but actually this one should feedback lots of results department from employees where first name equals Bob and 
that's the name that's name equals uh, Franco user lacks privilege or object not found but here it says note that you have granted full administrator privileges in this assignment and can access data without authentication unfortunately it says user lack lacks privilege or object not found the bob the first name equals bob last name equals franco it's here Bob Franco, but it says it didn't uh, find it. Okay, we want to check these things. When you go through this assignment, uh, please read this thing uh, carefully. Maybe we miss, uh, missed something. The tab name is employees. Okay, when you check this, I didn't see any place I have typos. Select department from employees. Use the text privilege and uh, or object not found. So the object should be found, but it says the user lack privilege based on here. I have I have been granted for administrator privileges. We may skip this one and come back later. Page three data manipulation language. You can use a select, insert, update, delete. Here show you example. Select firm from employees where user ID equals this one. Then it will deliver the phone number of the employee with this user ID. Here, try to change the department or Toby bonnet to sales. How do we change it? We can use these update statements. And we are required to change a Toby bonnet. Here it put into uh, three lines. Is it okay? You can put them in a single lines. Now you check the hint. Try the update statements. How do we use the update statements? The update table name set the column name equals value where the condition and for this uh, let's go back to this tool we want the uh, you can also use this uh, ID right? user ID as we tried the first time here where that user ID user ID equals the ID is nine Six one three four, and uh, it shows us succeeded. So, but but based on this table, the previous statements uh, should succeeded as well. And you will see similar limits inside these lessons. So you need to try try several times to get the answer the lesson needs. For example, those uh, case, it does not matter in the real world. Let's try here whether it uh, matters or not. Select department from employees where user ID equals 
9, 6, 1, 3, 4. And we submit. Again, we get uh, you have succeeded. Right? The case does not matter. Certainly, you can use uh, any of these conditions. Here, you can use the first name, use the last name, because it's uh, unique in this column. We should be able to get be able to get the same result as you see. It does not work. You can also use this salary or use this uh, authentication uh, stuff. In the real world, all those cases should work. But in this uh, assignment, you only need to supply the author wanted, the supply the answer the author designed. Then you will. Get it, uh, get it, uh, or pass this assignment. Okay, let's try now. Try this one. We we'll use update again. Use this uh, update statements. Update table name, set column name. It was a very well condition. So we can copy this whole thing. Kind of way paste here, then modify them one by one. First, the table name is employees. And set the column name here. The column name will ask to change the department. So, column name is department to Sales where the condition the condition has your user ID. Now we need to find this uh, Toby Bonnet. What's his user ID? Go back to that table. So now you will see uh, you may open this uh, website at several places. So you don't need to go back again and again. Right in the first place, we see uh, in the second page, we see this uh, table. We are asked to change this topic. So his user ID is this one. Now submit. You get the result again, and it's changed to uh, his department is changed to sales. This is the result. Now go next. Page four. You can see when this red icon turned to green, means you completed that one. Uh, in this table, data definition language. Create order job here again. Show you an example. Now, now try to modify the scheme by adding the column phone with this uh, type to the table employees. So we will need this uh, order. What is the structure of the existing table? Here, show hints. Order table. What is the structure of an existing database? Is a syntax you may find here or find uh, online using Google. Don't forget the data type of the new column. For example, where, chore size, and int size. Here, what table, table name, add a column name, data type. So please pay attention. Uh, SQL is a standard language, so as long as uh, database administration systems support the SQL language standard, but uh, the standards have, have have several versions, so it also depends on which version the DBS implemented. So when you are going to learn the database course, for example, 360, 460, 260, those kind of ITS courses, you will learn more about database. 
here we paste it here the table name is employee add a column name so add a column name the column name is a form and the data type the data type and the size is a virtual 20 so this is how do we add a column to this uh, table employee what uh, table employee add from virtual and submit the solution is not correct user lack privilege or object not found employee the table is employees so uh, uh, Mr. S add firm object not found uh, add this column here we check this one there's a column name data type so now in this case how do we solve this problem you see almost all these things are like this right another way you can find online SQL order table add column you can see example that lots of these kind of examples here so order table name add a column name that type uh, here for example order table for the table name add this uh, uh, column this column name and with this uh, type we go back we check this st statements now the name here the column name when you check here the example scroll down here add data bus no quote here right? no quote enclose this uh, data bus so we come back remove those quotes And submit the install so these are uh, other ways you can find the solution how to solve it now it turns to green and go to file here data control languages we can grant user access privileges to the database or revoke their uh, privileges for example grant create table to the user operator now here try to grant user group and uh, authorize the user the right to order tables so grant how do you could we just write order table here so let's show hint otherwise you can check online to find the syntax for these uh, grant statements look at this example there is everything you need this is an example it says we already have everything grant to make it readable we follow this uh, convention grant water table now unauthorized users unauthorized users and submit we are done this part okay again concepts 6 what's the uh, SQL injection with those techniques now we can uh, practice uh, SQL injection attacks but first we need to learn what's SQL 
injection. Here is the example. Select star from user where name equals something like this. Username. So please read this stuff carefully by yourself. In the SQL statements, you can add comments like this. Use double dash and end with this one. It will comment out from that uh, dash dash until the end of that line, the rest of the line. For example, this statement we have condition. If you add a comment to comment out this condition, then you can find all the information from that table. That may be not the program wants you to do, because usually a program needs to limit what you can access. Now here, here is an input field. Try typing some SQL in here to better understand how the query changes. So what, what we are going to do here? Select star from user where name equals yeah, equals this one. There's an input field. Try type typing some SQL statements in here to better understand how the query changes. They didn't ask uh, what kind of stuff we need to provide here. Please uh, read through this stuff. Okay, I will try something. Select star from Oops, now you didn't ask actually only to uh, to complete these statements. Right? Where name equals something. Equals uh, Bob. Here you see a Bob uh, comes here. And please pay attention. The top quote is just to work as a delimiter here. So we don't care about the top quote. We only need to care about the inside part from user equals where name equals Bob. So if we type uh, dash dash here. Now you will see all this stuff will be uh, here. This part will be commented out. To complete this uh, single quote, you may add a single quote here. Then the name equals actually an uh, empty string. And the others, it will be commented out. So for the, the other things, you can supply uh, another condition. For example, or one equals one. Now, in this case, it will look like this. Select star from user where name equals Smith or true. Now, this is all true. So this whole statement, it will become always true. So you will always get what you want. So the SQL injection, it try to use the comments here to comment out to make or make the, the condition always true. So, but you need to uh, comment out that single quote here. If we just, uh, without this uh, double double dash, uh, with, and also without this single quote, then you, you missed a single quote like this. Yeah, without that single code. Right, you get this one, and this one will be hold inside this single code. So this uh, dash dash, it will come out of this part. But you, you have only a single code, you will get a syntax error. Those code must be paired. So how do you solve that? As I just did, you had a single code in front of this part. Now the good idea is like this. You want to find some someone's information, for example, Smith. Then you put Smith here. Smith. 
and Smith is uh, quoted or others is commented out. But as we we want to uh, make the condition always true, you can use or true. Now you see what it uh, looks like. And how to con construct this sentence? We need to put this one inside the text box. But in the real world, uh, the web application, we need to do a lot, lot of analysis to see how they process the text we put into the input box. Here is just in this example, it processed this way. So then you can use this uh, attack to inject, what we call the inject, we inject this uh, sub uh, cross or true to make this condition, condition always true. And we will, uh, maybe it's better, we open it. Here this is page 6, we open it here. So we can come back later, right? Page uh, 6. Open it here. And uh, we continue this one. Seven. Seven is again for concepts consequences of SQL injection. As that one, we bypassed that condition. We can steal the information from the database. In even worse, we can shut down auditing on the database management system or truncate tables or loggers or add users, steal those passwords and so on. Read or modify sensitive data. It allows the attack to do all these things. It's based on the extent. How how much can you uh, inject? Eight severity of SQL injection. So we read this stuff by yourself. Here, not all database support command chaining. Sometimes we can type several commands into that input box to attack the database. But not all database supports command chaining, like these three. Some based on their configuration. It may support this command chaining, but it's disabled in its configuration. And you will learn the details in uh, IDS 450. It's more common in PHP, classical, ASP, Cloud Fusion, and old languages. Yeah, not all databases are equal. And also, even the, with the same database, their configuration may be different. It also depends on the security techniques applied onto those uh, websites. So now we need to practice uh, several uh, injections here. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, what is 9? Try it, string, SQL injection. In this uh, example here, the query in the code builds a dynamic query as seen in the previous example. The query is built by concatenating strings, making it susceptible to string SQL injection. Here the pass is concatenation. Using the form below, try to retrieve all the users from the users table. You should not need to know any specific username to get the complete list. Here, we select everyone, store means everything from the user data table where first name equals John and last name equals Smith now we inject this part or one equals one then everything becomes true right you get account info here pay attention to those single quotes 
here we cannot uh, add a single code here. It looks like this example. It uh, need is better put this single code at this place. Otherwise, it's uh, misleading. Here, let's click get account info. Now results matched, and you see this uh, res table looks like this. Last name equals Smith or right. So that single quote, we uh, move that single quote or add to some other places. We need to first quote this uh, Smith here. This one quote Smith, then the quote will be added here. So we will have or one equals one again. That one equals one. We still have a single quote. We will get a syntax error. So we need a uh, comment out of that. That one. How do we comment that out? You choose this list. Inside this list, we didn't see any comment here. Right, let's try it. Miss uh, mail formed string. This code, which are here, right? Have code here. So, or now, could we put something? Now, one x one is number. We compare string. So this one looks. Uh, then this code will here. This code will be added here. So one x one. Now you will get everything. So this uh, one is done. How do we use uh, string concatenation to inject SQL? Here, how do we say this one? You can consider this uh, as a cross. It's not a four statements. Now you see we steal all this information. Even though maybe the author just uh, lets you get John Smith's uh, information, but now we steal everyone's information. Turn numeric sequence injection. Here, I'll read this uh, carefully. The user account get uh, account info. Login account user ID. Here, let's see what the question asks for. The query in the code builds a dynamic query as seen in the previous example, like this. The query in the code builds a dynamic query by concatenating a number, making it susceptible to numeric SQL injection. Here, this user ID is a number now. Without quotes, quote is a string. Using the two input fields below, try to retrieve all the data from the user table. Warning, only one of these fields is susceptible to SQL injection. You need to find out which to successfully retrieve all the data. So it says only one of these fields is susceptible to SQL injection, so we need to try it. Right. For this one, the login count. So the login count uh, is a string or or anything. This login count equals this one. It says as seen in the previous example. So let's check the previous example. So what is the uh, part? It would be 9. Here previous example. This first name, the last name. Here is uh, login count. Right? So login count we can uh, just like let it equals uh, anyone. This one you will get an empty uh, uh, empty string to supply to the login count, and we can comment out use comment out to help try get a kind of info. 
free out this field. This field, uh, if it's a common out, the user ID is at the end, will be common out as well. So it will be, does not matter, type any number. Now it says, sorry, the solution is not correct. Please try again. Here, could not pass this one to a number. So we can check this now. The query, we see the query. Select star from user data where login count equals. So we can pay attention to this one. Right? It says count. This is what we get after we import these two things. So if you want to comment out anything, but this uh, login account, we still don't know is a string or something. We can have a try. For the double code. Here, double code. Could not pass this one. This comment, it cannot pass it. So in the real world, this part will be commented out, and you have a single quotes here. You should be able to get everything. So, which means this answer is not the was wanted. So we can try something. Also, we don't know whether this login count is a number or, or what. One two dash dash. Okay, this part it uh, cannot pass this one. Dash dash to a number is okay, but in the in the real world this uh, will work, and you will see this one in ITS four fifty. But here is quite uh, limited. We can try the next one here. User ID equals something. We can add uh, or one equals one. Then you get uh, everything. And uh, please pay attention. This is the key part. Why it worked? Because behind the web page it constructed this sequence statements here when you pay attention to this condition this all one x one makes the whole condition true so you steal everything now go to uh, 11 Compromising confidentiality with string SQL injection. Again, uh, please read this stuff carefully by yourself. And it's your turn to do something. You already found out that the query performing your request looks like this. Now, What the question want me to do? You should not here use the form below and try to retrieve all employee data from employees table. You should not need to know any specific names or tenants to get the information you need. Oh, the last name you can type anything. And the ten again you will type anything because we have feedback to see what the constructed six statements looks like, right? But in the real world you may not be able to see those the feedback. Also you may not be able to see this stuff, you only see two boxes like this. How do you know how to construct the SQL injection? And you will learn in IDS uh, 450. Here, we just use the feedback to have a look. No employee found none. We don't have feedback. We don't know 
third term, we can only have based on this one. Where last name equals something. The name here, see the name is uh, quoted. So now we see something. Single quote here, top quote here. And this one, we also have top quote, single quote. Oh, this is uh, quite confusing. We want to uh, make this condition always true. How about we add something like this? Or one x one. It says male formed the single quote. So the single quote is male formed. So in what case we will get a male formed single quote? It's very likely uh, at the end. Let's comment. Try it. Now that uh, single quote at the end is commented out. Commented out. So we get the uh, result. So we know how to construct, right? This because that is uh, or one equals one. So anything you put here does not matter. Bob, the ten, we just type ten. The thing we need to pay attention is that single quote. Or zero equals zero. It does not matter as long as you su supply uh, always a true uh, statement. Now, we need to comment out that single quote. We use this uh, comment. But when we go through here, we didn't see uh, any explanation about that. We will check the hint. Name was 10. Connect. And a war. Connect. That always resolves to to true. Here, make sure all quotes are open and closed properly. Here, these are techniques. If you don't use a comment, use this thing. Right? We have practiced this one in a previous uh, page. So this is a common way. Or you use the way as it uh, demonstrated here. Single quote. If you pay attention, uh, this two string zero zero equals here. Now another quote is from this this one this quote. I will get part. You also get success. Successfully. And then go to uh, 12. What's SQL query chaining? Chaining, which means we can uh, use this uh, semicolon to put several SQL statements in these uh, fields. Here your name is uh, John Smith and your time is this one. So you are an insider, right? So you know your information. You put them here. But you want to get every other's information. Here it asks you to uh, change your own salary. So you are earning the most. Get department. Again, we want to know what this table is. This table we used before. Here you go through read this stuff. Okay, it looks like the table is the employee table. Get the department still not earning enough. 
better try again and change that. So you see these things, right? And this is your salary here. How do you change your salary? You know the condition where the employee name equals this one and the authentication time equals this one. Now to add to add uh, one more sentence, the DML sentence, the data modification language, use that uh, update statements. First, you need to pair that single quote, right? You use a single quote paired here. Then use a semicolon. After that, you can add one more sentence. And this sentence, you are going to use that order sentence. So I want to find that order sentence. So here we know the table name is employees. So this order, order table, table name, order, change the type, not this one. We use that update. You want to change your salary, not change the table uh, structure. So find that uh, update statements. Update here. Update table name set column equals value, column two equals value, and so on. Where condition? You only want to change yourselves, not others, right? So you need to use a where condition. Update table name set column equals value. So how do we construct that one? We update table name is employees. Employees. What we are going to do? Uh, set the salary equals is a number. Let's say we want to add more, right? But maybe uh, just a little bit more. 80,000 and where the conditions you only want to change yourself if you without this where condition you will change everyone's salary to 80,000 this is not what you want so the employee name you may just use that uh, so let's check where this Smith is inside here John Smith, right? You can also use this user ID. Copy this one. Where user ID equals, so you only change yourself. Now let's uh, get department. Now it says, male formed, single quote. So at the end, there is still a single quote. Comment out that single quote. Still uh, not enough. Try again and change. How much do you want to change? Add one more zero. Okay, now you see a uh, your salary changes to 800,000. Your company just provide two box, let you check your own information. But through SQL injection, you changed your salary to 800,000. Without that condition, you will be able to change everyone's salary. Or in, actually, based on this uh, SQL query training, you see you can't do anything, right? Including draw, 
delete the users, even delete this table. It's based on the privileges you are granted. I know uh, 13. Compromising availability. Yeah, please read this uh, stuff carefully. And uh, my turn. Now you are the top earner in your company, but do you see that? There seems to be an access log table where all your actions have been logged too. So you will be catched. You will be caught. Better go and delete it completely before anyone notice. Now action contains and the search string. So again, we, we, we don't know what to do here because we don't know what will happen in this place. Action contains search logs. So we're going to search, uh, let's say, and the search string. There is a table called access log table. So what string do you want to search? We just uh, uh, what, uh, update the table, right? So you can search update to have a look. And you see what uh, I have done a moment ago. I tried this, tried this, tried this. They are all logged by the system. And you will learn how to get this information in digital forensics to catch those uh, network uh, criminal. Certainly, if they delete all these uh, loggers, delete their traces, then it will be very hard for us to catch them. Okay, how could I delete these things? This is a search table, right? You see, select stuff from employee where last name, use this one and this one, oh, this is the result. What's the sequence behind this text box? We, let's try that SQL chaining to have a look. Right now we can use a delete to delete everything. The delete statements to delete the data from the table. So you can uh, check the delete statements. We don't know the SQL statements is fine because you will learn them in our database courses. Here, delete from ta table name where condition. So I don't use where condition, then it will delete everything. So let's uh, delete from table, which means delete everything. Here again, I add a single code to call this one, then use a SQL chaining, delete from, now the table name is access logger access logger but in the real world you may not know what are those table names behind the website again there is uh, still a single quote so I need to comment out that single quote go search loggers there is still evidence of what you did better remove the whole table. Now we can have a try to have a look what uh, happened. Going to A, uh, let's just search it. If you search that uh, delete, quite successful, no data returned from this uh, query. Delete. 
it didn't find none. As it just says, it's not enough. Could we uh, delete this table? Right? Let's delete uh, delete this table. So you can search anything, does not matter. Use uh, SQL chaining, which means uh, add a semicolon, then you can add more SQL statements. How, how do we delete a table? We will drop statements. So you can check here. SQL uh, job database job table. Here you use this job table table name. If you know the database name, you can delete the whole database. So let's delete this uh, table. You use job table table name access log. Again, you need to comment out that single quote. And right, now we delete this table. And that way, compromise the availability of the data. Even though the website administrator found that the table is gone, but because all the traces are logged in that table, since the table is gone, there is no way for him or her to find who has done this, if only based on this access log table. Certainly in a system, in a real world IR system, there are lo lots of logging mechanism to log all the activities happen on the IT system. Okay, we just complete this in the introduction. It looks like we have a lot of things to uh, need to practice. So you, I will modify our lab. Maybe these are too much for you to complete. So let's try something others, some other stuff. For example, this uh, sensitive data exposure. Have a look. Okay, I will modify these requirements uh, later. You only need to uh, complete what I have uh, demonstrated. Otherwise, maybe these are too much for you. Sensitive data exposure here. Insecure logging. Encryption is a very important tool for secure communication. Let's read this stuff by yourself. Here, let's try it. Actually, in our previous lab, you practiced how to get login information from those uh, Wireshark captures, right? Those FTP login, HTTP login, you can get all those uh, credentials. If the login is insecure, so click the login button to send a request containing login credentials of another user. Then write these credentials into the appropriate fields and submit to confirm. Try using a packet sniffer to intercept the request. Now, you may uh, use uh, Wireshark, but here, Everything is intercepted by this uh, DAP. Right? You can find them here. So we can log in, it says uh, credentials of another user. So we don't know what the name of this user. I try myself, instructor, my password. And this practice is. Uh, is uh, identical to what you practice in our previous lab. You use Wireshark. So when I submit, I should be able to get something here. Right? Okay, now let's uh, do it. Please pay attention. Now this uh, ID is this one. We should get a larger ID number, just like you in Wireshark, you get a larger uh, frame number. So I submit. So it's not correct. Please try again. It's okay. Now you see this post, right? See this post. You can see the 
request here. This is what I submitted, instruct a password. And there is a response. You can also check this response. Here inside this response, we didn't see uh, any credential information, for example, username or password, that kind of thing. Insecure login task, sorry, the solution is not correct, please try again. So now let's, uh, there's no hint, right? There's no hint here. I don't know what did they ask me to do. Use a package sniffer to intercept the request. Create a login button to send a request containing login credentials of another user. Then write these credentials into the appropriate fields and submit to confirm. So another user, let's say Bob. You submit again. So how could we get another user? We check the request. Here, the next post, you get a username, Bob, password. So in here, you now you see that the lesson is uh, confusing. It says for another user. So who sees another user? How do I send request contain login credential? I want the user Bob, right? And submit it. And then write this uh, credential into the appropriate field and submit to confirm. So in this case, you may create a new user in the home page of this web goat and uh, try to uh, then you log in with that new created user intercept that user's credential with this zap then you put his or her credential put it here and submit and you should be able to get it done if the goal of this uh, question is designed like that We can have a try. Log out. Register a new user. Victim. Password. Sign up. Okay, this is the uh, victim. We have one more user. You see here, right? Victim, boy is the user. Log out. You can use this technique to get his uh, credential. So the password, I forgot what password what I typed. Type here. I think it's a one, two, three, four, five. When I type the password here, the victim, the username is is victim. Password and submit. It looks like uh, that. This is not it's uh, expected. When you check here, you can find that victim stuff, victim password. Anyway, I don't know. I don't understand what to ask for. Okay, now let's uh, check the next one. Don't worry about this stuff. I will modify this requirement. Sensitive data exposure 
I think uh, the last lab you practiced is better than this simple uh, lesson here. Okay, now cross site scripting. Oops, we have uh, lots of stuff here cross site scripting. Uh, please read this stuff by yourself. Reflected uh, XS injection, turn based XSS injection. What are these things? You read through these uh, web pages. It can be used to perform tasks that were not the original intent of the developer. Again, you will learn lots of details about these techniques in IDS 450. Because in IDS 450, you will construct all these things by yourself. Here, the concept. What are these things? You will need to know a little bit of JavaScript. Maybe uh, since this is 250, maybe you don't know uh, JavaScript. So, if you don't know, please always check the hints and uh, using uh, Google. Where are the cookie the same on each tab? Uh, where are the cookies the same on each tab? Here you can use this one to show the cookie. Open a second tab and use the same URL as this page you are currently on within this instance uh, web code. Then on the second that open the browser developer tools and open the JavaScript console, type this alert document cookie. So we need to know both, otherwise how do we know they're the same or not, right? Here maybe it asks you to type yes or no, or, or just a simple, a single letter Y or N. So how do we open the browser developer tools? For those students who are familiar with uh, Client side application, a web application, maybe you know how to use this uh, browser developer tools. You can right click here, inspect elements. But before that, let's open a new tab. Open this one in a new tab. You will right click, open link in new tab. I also need to go to this page, right? Same page. Now I have two pages, it asks us whether these uh, cookies are the same. How do we open the browser developer tools? Choose inspect element. Now here you have a console. Then you can type this uh, command here. Alert. document dot cookie press enter okay you see this cookie is uh, this one now also on the second uh, page right click anywhere inspect element choose console type that uh, alert document dot cookie okay you compare these two strings file c6 so it looks like the same okay they're the same click ok close this one click ok close this one I close all of them only left this one and type yes submit okay I, we complete this one right this one prepare you to use this uh, browser developer tools but uh, we have several popular browsers the interface how to get to those developer tools and uh, the interface of the developer tools 
maybe there are some differences. Three most common locations can find uh, this uh, HTTP stuff. Here, XSS attacks may result in this uh, result, stealing session cookies, creating false requests, and so on. So please uh, do it by yourself. Most common locations, oops, uh, come to this one, four. Why should we care? Absolutely, we need to care because today, most of the time, we interact with the website, right? If this information was stolen by an attacker, you know the result. File the types reflected domain-based, stored, or persistent, so please read it by yourself. Six, reflected XSS scenario, what it looks like. Seven, try it, reflected XSS. Identify which field is susceptible to XSS. Now we have so many fields, right? How do we know which one susceptible to reflected XSS? We can use this one, alert or consult or log method. Here, an easy way to find out. Use one of them to find out which field is vulnerable. So we can type alert here. To make it quicker, just copy this one. Control C. Control we put it here. Update cut. It says that number. This one. Control V. Ask a number. These are some uh, maybe a client side input verifications. So to defeat this attack, you see, you can check what are input, what are put in, put into these boxes, right? Here it should be numbers. Again, number. How about these two boxes? Try again. We do want to see the specific JavaScript. I try again here, the last one. In case you are trying to do something more fancy, okay, we tried all this place, but this is alert. Uh, does not show anything here. Right when we put this update cut and uh, click this purchase, nothing happened. We tried all this field. How about uh, we add something like this? Ask for number, it looks like all those things ask for number. This this one, what does it ask for? Okay, we put those things and we didn't see uh, which one is uh, vulnerable. We use alert put inside, but we didn't see the alert box popped up. It's always a good practice to validate all input on the server side, not the client side, because the client side you can modify. 
all the stuff. It can occur when unvalidated user input is used in the in a HTTP response in a reflected uh, XS attack. An attack can craft a URL with the attack script and post uh, to another website. Okay, we use this uh, alert and this uh, console log. We didn't uh, find out uh, which one is vulnerable, and uh, there is no. Let's just show the hint. Think about how the inputs are presumably processed by the application. We see they all are validated as uh, numbers. Quantity inputs are probably processed as integer values not the best option for inputting text. Right? This uh, we already see it uh, ask for a number. And what information need to uh, what information sensor application gets reflected back after being submitted. Here we get back these things. You have changed your credit card. Right? These are the things we, we get back. Just try purchase something. You want your script to be included in the purchase confirmation. Want to see some specific job scripts? We didn't see uh, any job scripts at this place. When we try this update cut here, this number is here. Job credit card job here. Right, update cut. When we change the number of the cut, it will. This number does not change. The total charge to your credit card does not change. But this number changed. So, to attack a uh, real world web application is a complex uh, task. You need to play with the website and find the attacking surface or the weak the vulnerability, the weak point. Here we are trying to find which uh, input box is vulnerable. Click purchase, this number changed. If we want to uh, add something, I want to type something like this, alert. Right? Console.log Now this time if we want to see anything happen we can check this uh, inspection to see the console and click purchase and we didn't see an output uh, about those uh, oh my console.log I log uh, one called attack and uh, we didn't see the attack here. Okay, we didn't find uh, the one little bit pot. Let's go to the next one. These are the concepts. Here you should have been able to execute scripts with the last example. It will be considered as this uh, safe access. Though, why is that? This is because there is uh, no link that would trigger that 
uh, trig zxss you can try it yourself to see what happens and go to this place here a lot field one you this one here quantity one quantity two quantity three quantity four then with this field one this field one it looks like uh, is that a uh, correct number right? here you see the correct number followed here and this field two equals one 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 so you see when it uh, add that uh, JavaScript it need to be enclosed with the tag script so we can add this tag and alert something here JavaScript here then with this script again so we can go back in this text box we add script add the tag to enclose uh, JavaScript then we type in a lot now inside this a lot what do we need to uh, put here you will check this one is it so what this means single quote single quote and uh, something my JavaScript here so that percent 20 is uh, the blank space encoded in HTML so we just copy this thing Put it like this. Click purchase. Now you see uh, my JavaScript here. So the attack uh, worked in this, in this uh, box. So actually, you just uh, use a script. So it looks this text box is uh, vulnerable script a lot you can type anything attack here so the key point in order to let the web application interpret this one as a script we need to enclose the statements with the job statements with this uh, script tag okay purchase you can attack Right, now we get to go to a uh, nine. So do this by yourself. Go to ten. So what do we need to uh, put here? Okay, I think uh, now uh, it's uh, the time is up. So you are only required to do. This uh, injection, SQL injection introduction, and uh, this uh, cross set scripting just complete to this place, to this shopping cart. For others, if you have interest, please uh, read and practice by yourself. You can always see, check the show hints to see how to go through. But some hints may be uh, not clear, so you need to uh, Google to find the related information.